I survived 100 days in a duo hardcore Minecraft world. I have done 100 days before, but this time I had another YouTuber in the world with me. This meant that if one of us died, the world would be deleted for us both, which made this challenge so much more intense. So if you do enjoy this video, please remember to subscribe. We are so close to 100,000 subscribers and 90% of my viewers who watch these videos aren't subscribed. So please subscribe, it's completely free and you can always change your mind at another time. A quick reminder that this Saturday on the 13th of March, I will be live streaming Minecraft Hardcore for 10 hours straight, which is a very long time so please if you have the time feel free to stop by i would really appreciate it and i also really appreciate mc pro hosting for sponsoring this video and giving us a server to record this on if you guys do want a server to do this with you and your friends head to the link in the description pick a server plan and use code sword 4000 at checkout for 20 percent off your order now i really hope you enjoyed this video it was so much fun to make let's get right into it so there we were two men in a spruce forest with one shared goal to survive 100 days in minecraft so we wasted no time and started right away by grabbing some wood and making some tools. After upgrading to the Stone Age, we ran around for a little while and then night fell upon us super fast. So we got into a boat to avoid mobs on the land. The boat didn't last too long, we needed food and I almost died. But as day two started rolling around, we found some sheep and headed into a desert. Pretty quickly we found ourselves at some villages and stole all of their wheat like the friendly people we are. And then we even found a nice temple. I was scared Guilty was going to kill us here by setting off the TNT, but he stayed composed and we were able to grab some diamonds which was epic. We were also able to find another village. And then as the sun of day 2 started to slip behind the distant jungle, we made a double bed and called it a night. On day three, we confirmed our living arrangements in this beautiful location with a crafting table and a furnace. And then I set off for the rest of the day gathering wood for our future houses. Upon return, I saw the early signs of a split up between the two of us, but I fixed that and we headed into day four. Which was pretty much just spent flattening out the area and landscaping a little bit so that we had a nice smooth land to build on. On day five, I ventured into the local jungle and I was able to find a portal ruin. I extinguished the fire quickly before the jungle was burnt down to ashes, but unfortunately the loot inside was pretty bad. But then pretty quickly my mood was lifted once again after I found a cute parrot and made him my friend. I named him Stuart. Feel free to say hi to him in the comments if you wish. And then the rest of day 5 was just spent gathering more wood from the jungle. Thankfully during day 5 Guilty went mining, so when I got back I was able to make myself a brand new set of armor. On day 6 I made myself a nice melon farm so that we could start growing some food. And then I joined Guilty on a nice journey underground to grab some cobble for our new houses. The ones that we would start building on day 7. And the same ones that would continue to be built all the way to day 10. I think when mine was done, you could already start to see who was the better builder out of the two of us. So whilst he finished off his very complex house, I dove back into the mines. We needed some more iron for tools, since we had already started to run low on what we had originally. And super quickly, I actually found myself in one of the cool new caves. And at one point, I almost died again. But thankfully, I was able to escape and resurface to skip the night of day 10. Since lava pools still don't generate underground in the snapshot, I had to go searching in the desert for a lava pool on day 11. But instead, I found another portal ruin. But I almost died again in the process of grabbing obsidian. You can probably start to see at this point who is more of a liability in this world between me and Guilty. Although he may have almost died too at this point, I'm not sure. Anyway, I slept away from home on day 11 and then headed back on day 12. In the process, I attracted some cattle, which I was able to lure home. And when I arrived, I allowed Guilty to trap them in. And then day 12 was already over. Seemed like a short day. On day 13, we ventured back into the cave that I almost died in, but as a duo to prevent any close calls. And in the process, I was able to get so many diamonds. These new caves make diamonds so much less rare, but they were also filled with mobs, so I can't complain too much.
But I now had 39 diamonds, so we resurfaced with what we had on day 15 and headed home. For some reason, Guilty slept in my house this night. I think he was feeling a little bit lonely. But anyway, on day 16, I made an enchantment table and was able to make a few bookshelves to surround it. We had a very little amount of leather, so we could only get three. But that was good enough for now. So I made some diamond armor and enchanted it with everything I had. On day 17, we decided to go on another joint journey. On our way back from the mining trip, we saw a jungle temple super close to our house. So, we saved the cords and went back to it. This world seed was incredible. We were in love with this world. But anyway, we grabbed the loot inside and then split off our own ways again to start our own tasks. Guilty was now in charge of building a villager breeding house since he is clearly the better builder of the two of us. And I was in charge of transporting the villagers from the local village. I made a flat tunnel from the village to our houses just to make transporting them so much easier instead of having to go up blocks all the time. And I was able to do this pretty successfully. And the one main task for Guilty to do was to make the house escape proof for the villagers. He did a pretty bad job at this. But thankfully we were able to recapture the villagers that escaped and put them back in. And by day 21 we had our first baby villager. So on day 22 before our next big mission, I made a drop down area for the baby villagers to be separated from their parents so that we could easily distribute them into new areas to give them jobs. And then so we could keep our carrots, we made a wheat farm so that we could breed our villagers with bread. Day 23 was the day of exploration. The day that we had been dreading the most, since I won't lie, we were both very nervous to enter the nether. But to be fair, our spawn wasn't too bad. So we wasted absolutely no time and started grabbing XP from the quartz. I also found a piglin to trade with to try and get some extra leather with the gold that I had, which was successful on some parts. And I almost died at one point since I thought I could long jump for some reason. But even though I was able to cheat death, this ghast wasn't. And neither was the Enderman. And after further exploring, thanks to my trusty lookout, he was able to give me a heads up on another ghast. I was barely able to avoid death, which I can only assume was revenge for what I did to his friend. But after a few days of exploring the nether, we weren't able to find any nether fortresses or anything cool really. So we headed home with a bunch of XP and some of the traded items we had and called it an end to our adventure. For some reason, our portal returned us underground, but we were quickly able to find our way home. But this is definitely something we need to fix in the future. When we returned, we quickly realized our villager drop down area was working perfectly. So I started to build a librarian house. This is where we would move a bunch of the villagers and turn them into librarians to try and get some good enchants from them. The main one, of course, being mending so that our armor fixes itself. I built this house for a few days from an image I just stole from Google. And when it was done, I was able to start transporting the villagers. I was able to fit five in this house for now. And to be honest, the first few enchants weren't amazing. But whilst I built the librarian house, Guilty had made a beautiful farmer house for all of the farmer villagers to be placed in. Like honestly, he's such a much better builder than me. But whilst he finished that off, I slipped away for a secret project. I wanted to make a super cool sugarcane farm that was blended into the local jungle, just so that it wouldn't be an eyesore in our area. And after a little bit of work, I think it turned out really good. We needed this so that we could get paper to trade for emeralds with the villagers and then not struggle to get trades when mending finally arrives. And even though this thing is small right now, eventually it's going to get us a bunch of paper. On day 32, I did something incredibly stupid. I tried to show Guilty how tall bamboo could go. And looking back at this, this was a horrible idea. I could have died easily. But once I got down, I became a reasonable person again and ventured into the nearby village. Obviously, we have started our own villager population now. So we wanted to take down our rivals in the town over. So I scouted it out and started an attack plan for when we had bad omen and could start a raid. On day 33, I made a bamboo farm near the sugarcane farm so that we could start farming sticks. And whilst I did this, Guilty was nice enough to set up a Fletcher villager, meaning that we could start trading right away. This is such an easy way to get emeralds. 
Day 34 consisted of pretty much the same stuff, just chopping down wood, making sticks, and getting as many emeralds as I possibly could. I even got another villager in at one point so I could even trade more sticks. I love sticks. Day 35 consisted of killing my animals. I wanted leather to finish off the bookshelves, and in the process of slaughter, a wandering villager showed up, which was cool. Then I grabbed some paper, made the bookshelves, and finished off our enchanting area. On day 36, I went and chopped down some more of the jungle for wood. I wanted more emeralds from the villagers, and by day 37, we had a load of spare sticks. Oh, and Guilty found this crazy floating island super close to our village. Like genuinely, this seed is incredible. He then started the build on our brand new barn to store all of our animals in instead of just having them in a square in the middle of our houses. And then I farmed some more bamboo for emeralds. And once I had three stacks of emeralds, I realized it was probably time to start spending them. So I got back to refreshing the villagers. After a very long time, I was finally able to get mending, and it was actually for a really good price. But even though I now had a plethora of emeralds, I was still all out of books, so I had to wait until we had more leather. So I bred the cows a little bit, and then went chopping again to get more sticks for emeralds in the meantime. This jungle was huge, no one will even know that I chopped most of it down, right? Oh yeah, and by the end of day 42, the barn was finished. Guilty is an incredible builder. Go check out his video to see the builds in more detail if you want to, because he is incredible at what he does. But anyway, on day 43, I went back to the villagers. I really wanted to get a protection book. This was because my armor at the moment was still completely void of any sort of good enchants. So I needed to upgrade, and after quite a few refreshments of the villager, I was able to get a protection 3 book in the trade. So I grabbed four books to cover all of my armor and enchanted my armor to the maximum with the enchantment table. And thanks to the enchantments that I got from the table, I was able to upgrade my entire armor set to protection four. So I'd like to say that today was a pretty successful day. And on day 45, I started to clear out some of the jungle. I wanted to continue to expand my sugarcane farm because the more paper that we could produce meant the more emeralds that we could spend on stuff that we need. So I cleared out a nice big area and basically doubled the size of my sugarcane farm. The next day, we realized that time was really slipping away from us in this world and we hadn't really done much yet. So we set off in the attempt to get some bad omen. This of course allows you to start a raid at a village, which would also be an easy way for us to get some totems of undying to cheat death if we were to die. So we returned to a pillager outpost that we had found earlier in the world when starting to look for a place to build our house. And for some reason, after almost a whole day of killing the pillagers, no captain spawned, which meant that we couldn't get bad omen. So we just assumed that maybe we had a glitched outpost, so started the search for another one. We split up on the search, and I was actually able to find a shipwreck on the land. Like, I had never seen one of these before. But then finally, on day 49, we could see a new pillager tower in the distance. But yet again, we stayed at this outpost for a whole day, and we were just not able to get any captains spawning. And just as we were about to give up, Guilty exploded with cheer in the call as a captain spawned right next to us. We were finally able to get some bad omen. So after an already super long journey, we headed to the closest village to just start a raid as quick as possible. But for some reason, this one raid that we started was super easy. And no evokers even spawned, so we weren't actually able to get the one thing that we left for, which was a totem of undying. So we headed back towards the pillager tower and waited around again for a captain to spawn. We were much more patient this time since we knew the outpost wasn't glitched, and thankfully pretty quickly we were able to get bad omen again. So we slept the night and on day 52 we stormed this village in the anticipation of another short raid. But thankfully this time we were in luck, and we were able to take on 7 full waves of pillagers, which this time did include an evoker.
This meant that we were finally able to get our hands on a totem of undying. But we couldn't stop there. We had to finish this raid. And in all honesty, with the iron golem's help, this thing was much easier to complete than we had both anticipated. And by the end, we were both able to get ourselves two totems of undying each. But finally, after a long but relatively easy raid, we had won. So with our golden rewards, we decided to start heading home and call an end to our journey. Day 54 was the day that we returned back from our raid adventure. My first goal was to finally buy the mending books from our villager and apply them to my armor, since it had taken quite the beating from our travels. But unfortunately, the anvil broke after the first piece of armor was done. And since I realized really quickly that I wouldn't actually have enough XP to do all of my armor pieces, I headed into the jungle and chopped down a few more trees so I could do stick trading and get XP from that. I also went and harvested the bamboo farm because that hadn't been harvested in a long time and this got me a bunch of sticks. But that was when I realized that these poor Fletcher villagers were still in a dirt hut that Guilty had built them a few weeks ago now. So I decided to use some of my wood that I had left over to upgrade their hut into a more reasonable build. And I even brought a few more friends over. And then finally to finish off day 56, I made a new anvil and added the mending to the rest of my armor pieces with my new XP. The next two days were spent building a pumpkin farm. These things are another super easy way to trade and get emeralds since the pumpkins grow so fast. And after building this on day 58, Guilty informed me that he had trapped a cartographer in his own area. This was so that we could trade with him and get ourselves a map to help locate a Woodlands mansion. Since the chances of just finding one without one of these is really, really slim, we probably needed it. So I spent a long time farming a bunch of sugarcane to make paper and level this guy up, but he needed a lot of paper. So whilst I was waiting for the sugarcane to grow again, I decided I would yet again extend the farm. And by day 60, the cartographer was fully upgraded to the level that we needed and was able to offer us the Woodlands Explorer map. So I bit the bullet and made the trade and was able to see the Woodlands Mansion icon on the map. We had now done the easy part, then we needed to do the hard part of actually getting to this place. We spent the next day preparing for the journey by trading lots and lots of our emeralds for food. This is because in my last world, the Woodlands Mansion map was well over 13,000 blocks from my house. And it took a long time to get there when I wasn't prepared. So we made sure that we were prepared for the worst and set off on day 62. And I was right. This Woodlands Mansion was nowhere near our man-made village. But on the way there, we did find a few villages and an ocean monument, which was pretty cool. But by day 65, the map finally started loading in, which meant we were basically here. After a pretty long journey, we didn't want to mess around, so we stormed this place with 100% confidence. There was an evoker in here as well, which was great, but he didn't really pose much of a threat to me. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the vexes though. We found some bookshelves, a very illegal fight club, and many, many more vindicators. But we were yet to realize we were about to hit the jackpot. We found a huge library which was filled with three double layer blocks of bookshelves. This was a gold mine. 
So we grabbed every single last one of them since these are actually really something we can use. So we grabbed every single last one of them since these are actually something that we can use back home. And then I had the very aggressive thought for some reason of burning this place down. And oh my goodness, I had no idea how fast this thing would burn. Within a matter of minutes, the whole place was in ashes. But we decided to not let it go to waste and spent the night outside keeping warm by the fire. And then the next day, we started our long journey home. Along the way back, we found this really cool abandoned village. We tamed some dogs. Which we quickly realized were lost after a boat trip across the ocean. And then we arrived back home on day 71. But even though we just got back from a journey, we were still on a very strict time schedule. And day 100 was quickly approaching. And as a duo, we had barely even been to the nether. And not even remotely touched any netherite. So we spent the next two days gathering wool and beds for a nether trip because we wanted to get ourselves some netherite armor. And when we set off on day 74, I had no idea the success I would have on this mission. This was by far the most successful netherite mission I had ever embarked on. However, unfortunately, Guilty couldn't say the same. He went in with almost double the amounts of beds of me but I was able to leave on day 76 with 24 pieces of the ancient debris. And Guilty was only able to leave with 5. But since we made a pact before we went in that it was every man for themselves, I was able to upgrade all of my armor and even some tools. But since Guilty was only able to leave with 5, all he could upgrade was his sword. But now that we had netherite armor, we had no time to wait around. So on day 78, I was right back to refreshing the villagers, and so was Guilty. We were both trying to get either Looting 3 or Sharpness 5 on our swords so that we could enter the nether for Wither Skeleton Skulls. And luckily, I actually got Sharpness pretty quick. So whilst Guilty was still waiting to get Looting, I went into the nether to try and search for our first fortress. And instead of going the way that I went last time, I went the opposite way, and I was somehow able to find one super quickly. Like, it was literally less than 100 blocks from the portal. So I returned back to get Guilty after he had got his looting bug that he needed, and then we went into the nether together. There was quite a lot of wither skeletons here, to be honest. And Guilty was able to get his first skull really quickly with his looting sword. I can't say the same since I was still waiting for XP to add mine to my sword, but once that was done, I got my first skull super quickly, and since Guilty in that time had already gathered two, we now had all three skulls that we needed. So we wasted no time and headed straight back home, and when we returned, a very strange sort of zombie horde spawned right at our house. Neither of us have ever seen this before, and we were so confused. If you know what this is, let me know in the comments. But then we went to sleep to make sure we had enough rest for the wither the next day. But there was a change of plan. We didn't do the wither on day 81 because Guilty didn't feel comfortable taking on the wither without potions. So whilst he was brewing away in his house, I started to work on a second barn to split the cows and the sheep apart from each other. But as day 81 came to an end, he told me that he was now ready for the wither. So we slept and headed into the caves on day 82 to start the wither boss. And we made one huge mistake when doing this. We did it in an open cave, which meant the wither was just able to hug the roof and avoid us. But thanks to there being two of us, Guilty took most of the hits and allowed me to deal quite a lot of damage to this thing. And once it dropped down to our level, it didn't stand a chance. And then after that, we just resurfaced as if nothing had ever happened. I continued to make my barn all through the night of day 82 and all the way through the day of 83.
And on day 84, I was finally able to light this place up and move the cows in. On day 85, another wandering villager showed up at our village, and his trades were pretty bad, and then after a while, he just randomly disappeared. I don't know where he went. But I spent the rest of day 85 in the jungle farming wood. This was again so that I could trade with the villagers to get emerald blocks to now power our new beacon. So I returned at the night of day 85, and it seemed Guilty had been robbed of all of his armor whilst I was gone. But after we slept, he had his armor back, and we were now able to power our beacon. After this, we were pretty dead set on going to the end within the next few days. We were both super ready and eager to get our hands on an elytra because we were bored of walking after 86 days. But before we left for the stronghold, I wanted to get my hands on a spyglass since we still didn't have optifine. So I went to the ocean to look for amethyst shards and in the process, this seed got even better. I found a mushroom biome. This is one of the rarest biomes in Minecraft. So I was so happy to see this. And as I was checking it out, I saw a pillager tower in the near distance. And if you know me at this point, I will never turn down an opportunity for a good raid. So I spent the night of day 86 waiting for captains to spawn, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So on day 87, I called upon my duo partner to take over the pillager tower whilst I continued my quest for amethyst clusters. Which like I said, once in the ocean are very easy to find. And I was able to do just that. So then I had the one thing that I needed for the spyglass, the amethyst shards. And just as I grabbed them, Guilty informed me that a raid captain had in fact spawned at the tower. So I headed back right away so that I could grab the bad omen and head back home and start a raid. But to my surprise, there was a lot more than one raid captain at this tower. And since I completely forgot that bad omen had different levels, I killed all three of the raid captains. Meaning that when I went home, I would be unintentionally starting a level 3 raid, which is much harder than a normal one. So as we returned home on day 88, we started the hardest raid of our lives and we had no idea. At first, it was quite manageable. But by the time the fifth wave showed up, we realized what we had done. And like, honestly, there was so many pillagers. And for some reason, they didn't even know Guilty existed. They all came for me. But thankfully, after many, many, many close calls, at the dusk of day 89, we had become victorious and beat the raid. The next two days were spent preparing for the end. It was super close to the end of our 100 days journey and we had no idea where the portal even was yet. So we set off on a long adventure to find it. We quickly realized that we had to tackle a jungle on the way and even had to sleep in there at one point. But on day 92, after going across the ocean, we realized that we had gone past where we needed to be. So we used a few more eyes and tracked down where the portal was even further and continued to search. After a while, the eyes of Ender went into the ground, so we started strip mining down below to find the dungeon. This took so long, we had no idea that it could spawn this low down in the world. But finally, after finding the dungeon, it took us, as much as this pains me to say, a whole day inside of there to even find the portal. But now our time had come, we were ready to take on the dragon. So we leapt through the portal, and we did this just to be scared to death by a game glitch. But thankfully we didn't actually die, and we were able to start taking out all of the pillars to show this dragon who the real boss was.
And to be honest, it did actually take us quite a while. But eventually, we were able to kill her and grab so much XP. This helped me repair all of my tools which had mending, which was great. But then we headed into the end city portal. This was where me and Guilty would part ways for technically the first real time in this whole adventure. Since we both wanted an Elytra, we decided to split up to cover more ground and try and find one each quicker. And to be honest, it didn't necessarily work. The first end city I found didn't actually have a ship, and it took me a long, long time to find the next one. But eventually it happened, and thankfully this one did have a ship with it. So I was able to grab myself an Elytra and head back towards the portal. Whilst Guilty was still trying to find an Elytra, I farmed some XP and Ender Pearls from the Enderman. Then, on day 97, he finally returned with his own Elytra. We were so happy at this point since we were very scared to enter the end at first anyway, so the fact that we were able to get out alive was amazing. So we flew back through the portal and headed home. But we didn't help ourselves, because we broke our beds back home, we teleported back to spawn. So we just went to sleep whilst we were there, and then on day 98, we were able to get our hands on some fireworks to launch us into the sky towards our village. We fell on top of the world at this point. I spent the rest of day 98 training with the villagers to get on breaking and mending on my elytra, and then farmed some sugarcane to make a load more fireworks. Oh, and Guilty also found a really cool place to put the dragon egg. Day 99 was quiet. We found a jungle temple with some horrible loot. And we did some trading. And to be honest, that was all. So we admired the last day and we decided to head to bed and enter day 100. But I had one last thing to do for old time's sake. And there it was. We had officially survived 100 days in a duo hardcore Minecraft world. If you guys did enjoy this video, please go down there and smack that like button. We both agreed since this takes so much longer than a solo one to do since we have to work out time zones and him being American and me being English, it's a lot harder. If this video hits 30,000 likes, we will do a part two. And I actually would really like to do that because this world is so cool and there's still so much more that we can do. But for now, that is going to come to the end of today's video. So like I said earlier, please, if you have the time, come and stop by my live stream on Saturday. It would mean a lot, even if it's just for 5 or 10 minutes, just to say hello. I would really, really appreciate it. But that's all from me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.